I have come to today to talk with you on a, one of the greatest issues of our time, the progression of human values. I have chosen to discuss it in Greece, not just because here in this soil the roots of dem democracy have long ago extractive and here they have been uh, recently worshipped. It's also because here I find myself in, its, in the sense of the greatest misery of today. I have chosen to discuss it today because the issue of human values is received for the settlements of the outs, of outstanding political differences for the future of the world and humanity. On paper, the overreading importance of human values is fully re recognized by the United Nations. The, co the concern of the privation and, and formation of human rights and fundamental freedom is central to them. That's why the United Nations declared uh, already in the year 1948 that they are uh, determined to Pro promote the belief in fundamental human rights, in the dignity, in the dignity and worth of the human person, in the equal rights of man and woman, and uh, of nation, large and small, and uh, to promote social progress and better living standards and a greater freedom. Today we know this. Is, today we know this as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The first was that the peace and the security of mankind uh, depends on mutual respect for the rights and freedoms of all. One of the proposals the, of the declaration was uh, to achieve international cooperation in uh, solving international problems of economic, social, culture, or humanitarian characters, uh, characters, and in promoting and uh, encouraging respect for human rights and for fundamental freedoms for all without destination as uh, to race, sex, language, or religion. The declaration was accepted by the General Assembly on December 10th in the year 1948 at the Palais de Chaliot in uh, Paris, France. It was, a it was a intended as a declaration with a great moral force, which says to the people of the world, this is what we hope human rights may mean to all the people in the years to come. It's, uh, it sums up the rights that are uh, considered fundamental for individual human beings all over the world. Uh, without this right, the full development of individual personality, uh, well-being, and uh, dignity is impossible. It was also meant uh, as a covenant in the form of a theory for the nations of the world. The convents become big bending. That's why this. Uh, that's why this uh, covenant is, of course, of course, a simple document. Uh, it only includes the uh, rights, rights guaranteed by law, and uh, it included methods of uh, inclination. A uh, new state that fulfilled uh, the convent is uh, allowed to inform these rights. The adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, I believe, should have encouraged every nation to keep, to keep its people aware of this value.
till, till today and forever. So, that every person and their, for every politician has a deep understanding of the obligations involved. Uh, it is my belief, and uh, it is my belief, and I am sure it's uh, also yours. Uh, that's the struggle to hold on these basic human rights. Means the struggle to hold on human values, and this is a central struggle for the like uh, democracy democracy and freedom. Therefore they they for uh, therefore their preservation in SMTL to main, maintain international peace and security. For those who had their part of history lessons, the words you just heard might sound familiar. Some will even have some will even have a recognize them as a freely freely perverted version of very famous speech by Eleanor Roosevelt. The struggle for human rights. The original, the original speech was uh, given by her on the 28th of the September in the year 1948 in the city of Paris in France. Uh, this was uh, just a few months before over 15 nations, 15 nations uh, seeking the Universal Declaration for Human Rights. And when you listen to read the words Eleanor Roosevelt spoke, then it is very hard to not to be calm, see cynical. But let me try anyway, because being cynical never solves the problem. Uh, I would like to make an observation about uh, where we where we have ended up almost 75 years since the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Let me start with repeating one thing we all know. After the Second World War, most people agreed uh, on one thing, this can never happen again. Uh, people were directly affected by uh, Credit, They were, they were victims. Had a witness, witness, or been part of awful sense fights, killing of the thousand, or they had at least a connection with someone who did. This means that people could relate. That story weren't anon anonymous. They were about real people, and when real people experience the worst, we feel we feel for them, and we express empathy. Empathy. Yeah, this makes us human. With the years, things things changed, and with the things, I don't mean our humanity. Because and um, it's a today's good news. We still are human. We still feel for other people. But every large major every large majority of all people care about care about the well being of the other people. And almost all people also still agree that uh, every person in the world should be able to claim all rights. As it described in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So, what goes wrong? 
Why is it that so many people today live in a situation where they will be left uh, at when they claim? For example, Article 25 of the Declaration, which, which states that everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate, addicted, addicted for health and well-being of uh, himself and of his family, including uh, food, clothing, housing, and medical care, uh, and uh, necessary social service. And the right security in the event of unemployment, sickness, uh, disability, we do food, old age, or other lack other lack of livelihood in circumstance uh, beyond, beyond his control. Motherhood and childhood are entitled to a special care or assistance. All children, whether born in or out of a wedlock, shall enjoy the same social protection. Mm. What is wrong with us that we don't object to the fact that thousands of children traveling throughout Europe without present or any legal uh, guidance? are being used, illustrated, and repeat every day. How is it possible that at the island of Lesbos, at the European border, where today over 80,000 people who seek for asylum are being kept for years in a highly, highly overcrowded camps and tents in the most inhuman condition uh, imaginable. Uh, it is said that anyone who publishes publishes footage or sitoral messages on the horrible situation in this camp uh, via social med media will get a new on his request for asylum, which is direct by violation of Article 19. Which states that everyone has the right of, to freedom of opinion and expression. A right that includes freedom to hold opinion without interference and to seek. Received and impart information and ideas without any Throughout any media and regardless of frontiers. The rule that one will lose his right for asylum is not official, but uh, even as a treat, it's not just provided without rights. It's also, it's also unless people to tell their stories. So it's um so it's unless it's unless people to show themselves to the world. It's unless people to be seen as people because they are not seen at all. What does that say? Why do we let this happen? My answer would be the Universal Declaration of Human Rights only counts for humans. In the past year, more and more often, groups of people were framed as a number instead of humans. A refugee is not longer a person with a name, a face, a torture, with a talents and dreams looking for safety about the, th the threat to our own rights. 
In the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 29 states that in the uh, exercise of his rights and freedoms, everyone shall be subject only to such limitations as are uh, determined by law. Solely for the solely for the purpose of the securing a due recognition and respect for the rights and freedom of others and of meeting the just requirements of morality, public order and the general will welfare in democratic society. This means in order to implement all human rights for all people. We have to give these rights to all people. Otherwise, this whole, whole declaration is worthless. Now the big struggle. When people feel the giving other people rights is a danger for one's own rights. But when taking other people's rights also means you could you could lose your own. There's the only one way out dehumanizing other people. So Every affective circle was formed by transforming people into refugees, by making refugees number, by describing these numbers, for example, as the dangerous uh, to, 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 to tsunami. Uh, a tsunami filled with uh, continental criminals, criminals through a tourist. Something so far from human that there is a no, there is a no reason to care, only to fear. So, because the people are no people anymore, just little, just little parts, uh, parts of a, a tsunami, and therefore human rights do not relate to them. This is how we hack our own brains, and we need to fix this. So, what now? If we if we truly value universal human rights, which I believe we do. Well, it is my belief that first of uh, all, we need to break this circle of the humanization. Valuing people is only possible if we start the record, record, record recognizing people as a people, and not the numbers, or threats. Here lies a role for all of us. This can start with the beginning, being aware to talk about the human beginning. If you hear numbers in the news when another boat uh, sinks and so many migrants drown. Journalists can help by sh showing, talking, and writing about more than just groups of people. They can give people uh, faces, sh share personal stories. Politicians need to watch their language because language can be poisonous. Uh, the metaphors we use describe asylum seekers can can and will dehumanize them.
No, of course. This doesn't just count for politicians, but also generalists. But especially politicians should be aware that whatever they do or say, it's a contiguous. So, don't talk about immigrants. Talk about people seeking for a safe place. So, don't talk about asylum seekers. Talk about, talk about fellow, fellow human beings who should have the same rights as you. And uh, when you hear a colleague in Parliament framing that that teenage asylum seeker should be seen as a young adult and they speak out. Because uh, this is not just a violation of Article 12. No one shall be subjected to attacks upon, upon his uh, honor and the reputation. Everyone, everyone has a right to protection of the law against such interference or attacks. It also shows a lack of human values. And last but not least, uh, democracy is often wrongly interpreted as the view of the majority. Also, also the people who fear the most will always raise their voice the most. These loud voices are often interpreted as the majority, but this is an incorrect version of reality. Democracy is not about disciples. It is not about what the majority wants. Democracy is meant to hear all voices and to make them count. Also the silent ones. The Universal Declaration for Human Rights is for everyone without destination of any kind, such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political, or the opinion, national, or social, origin, property, birth, or other statute. Uh, further, or no, for, for there more, no destination shall be made on the basics of the political jurisdictional juris, 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 or international statutes of the country of uh, territory, territory, territory to which person belongs, whether uh, it be independent, trust, not self. Governing, whether governing or under any other limitation of sovereignty. Sovereign when, when we value democracy and want to act according to universal human rights, we agree and we need we need to recognize all people as human beings instead of numbers. So, we need to value all the children as the future of the world with no exceptions.
Okay, I'll follow you. to talk with you on one of the greatest issues of our time.